Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev. In this video we're going to be looking at derived tables. We're going to be looking at what derived tables are, why we should use a derived table and how to create derived tables. Let's head over to SQL Server Management Studio and go through some examples. OK, so you've joined me in SQL Server Management Studio. For this demonstration, I am going to be using AdventureWorks 2019. It is a database that is readily available online. So if you'd like to follow along, do download a copy of the adventureworks.bat file and restore it. Also, the code samples will be in the description. So if there's anything you're struggling with, you can refer to the description for the code that I'm actually going to be using in this video. Now we're going to be starting off with looking at what a derived table is. So I'm just going to start off with a very simple query, which is going to be selecting the customer ID and the total due from the sales.sales .sales order header table. Okay, so now what we're going to look at is how we can turn this into a derived table. And a derived table is often referred to as a subquery. And it, and it kind of is, but the difference is a derived table appears in the from clause. So what we're going to be doing is selecting all from. And then we're going to just wrap our original query in parentheses. Uh, and I'm just going to indent that to show that clearly. So we can see here, similar to a subquery, sub except that this returns an actual table result set. So we're going to be performing this operation first. So we're going to be selecting customer ID total due from sales dot sales order header. And then we're going to be selecting everything from that result set. Now we can see here, we have a red squiggly line. And if I go ahead and execute this, we do get uh, an error message to say we've got an incorrect syntax. Now the reason is, is because we actually have to give our derived table an alias. And I just commonly alias it as D. So if we go ahead and execute that now, we'll get the correct results. Now, within a derived table, within the parentheses, we're okay to go ahead and execute that query as normal. So the parentheses are representing perform this operation first. So first of all, SQL is going to know that it needs to select customer ID total due from sales.sales .sales order header table and it's going to be selecting all from there. Uh, and then I can change this select to how I would want it. So let's imagine I just wanted to select the customer ID for argument's sake. So I'm just going to select the customer ID from this result set. And if I go ahead and execute that, I've just got the customer ID returned now from that result set. So that's a very quick example of what a derived table is. So very easy to write. Remember, we have to give the table an alias. We can execute the inner query within the parentheses independently. So that's a good benefit. Um, it appears within the from clause of our actual query itself. Uh, that's the operation that's performed first. Okay, so we've, we've seen a quick example. We now know how we'd go about writing a derived table. Let's move on to practical use. So why would we actually use a derived table? Now, let's imagine that we want to perform multiple operations on our, our table. So let's imagine in this case, for example, we want to find out the average of total customer spend with us. So we're unable to write a simple select statement that goes, give me the average of the, of the sum by customer. So that's where we could use a derived table. That's quite a useful 
way of looking at derived tables. So if we change our inner query to return our total due by customer ID, and with free within this inner query to perform most of the operations we would do in a normal query but it has to return a relational set and what I mean by that I'll come on to shortly so we're going to start off with our inner query within our derived table where we return the total by customer what we then want to do is take that total for each customer and calculate the average so let's calculate then average total due as average total um, we don't need any average total because we've we've actually aliased that within here so because we've aliased it within here in the outer query we need to refer to the new column names so let's execute that query and we can see we've got our result set so that a typical use case for derived tables similar to CTEs I'm not going to go through the differences of derived tables and CTEs in this video but I am doing this as part of a short series all about derived tables and as part of that there will be a video on the differences between derived tables and CTEs I'll also do a video on joining to derived tables and also nesting derived tables so we can also nest derived tables but things do get a bit complex but that will be coming soon to the channel so that's a typical use case for a derived table so think about other operations you need to perform so perhaps you like to use window functions so window functions happen within the select but then you want to query those window functions so you want to apply filtering perhaps so what we could do is wrap that window function in the inner query in the derived table and then select and apply filtering to that now let's talk about some some common errors with derived tables so mostly the mistake I make is forget to alias the derived table uh, and the error message isn't quite clear it just gives you an incorrect syntax error it doesn't say what's actually missing so that's a common mistake I make the other one is that we need to give our columns a name so we need to actually name our columns within the derived table uh, so let's take off this this calculation and we'll just change this to a select all with an asterisk so we can execute the the inner query in this case because we don't need to return the column name but when we've got it within a derived table and we try and do that we'll see that we've got an error to say no column was specified and there's a couple of ways we can actually give our columns names so we've seen the typical way we give it an alias but we can also do it in a table definition here so if we say as D and then we can specify a list of columns so that's quite interesting so we've opened uh, another parentheses there and we've defined the columns within our derived table here so we go ahead and execute that and that would happen as normal now that's not something I often do but it might be something you want to have a go at um, I prefer to alias each column individually but let's have a look at what happens if we try to use both so let's give this uh, let's call this sum total now let's this is going to be interesting to find out so we've aliased it as sum total here but we've aliased we've defined it as total here so which one of those wins and it's actually the definition here so we've, even though we've aliased it as sum total here 
this is overwriting that with a new column name. The other one is we can't actually use an order by. So remember I mentioned earlier you can pretty much do anything within a derived table but it's got to return a relational set. Now an order by will break the relational set uh, unless you're using something like top or offset and fetch. So if I add an order by customer ID into our inner query and execute it we'll get this error saying the order by clause is invalid and it actually lists out where it's invalid views, inline functions, derived tables, subqueries, common table expressions uh, unless top set, offset or for XML is also specified the last thing to mention uh, about in this introduction to derived tables is they are ex executed in line. So what does that mean? Well, let's just take off that for now and we will remove this. So we're going to start off with a very simple derived table that's just going to select the two columns from our table. So we're just going to select those two columns and then in the outer query we're going to perform the aggregation. So we're going to perform sum total due as total. So when we read this query what's actually happening is from the table we're returning customer ID and total due. We're then taking that result set and we're saying for each customer sum that total due amount. So of course we can we can simplify that. We can simply write select customer ID and then sum total due. As total and this is directly from the table so there is no need for us to use a derived table here but it suits what we're going to look at very well. We're going to look at what we mean by executing in line and to do that we're going to turn on the actual execution plan so there's a few ways we can do that I'm going to click include actual execution plan up here but you can press Control M on your keyboard or click on Query and include Actual Execution Plan. Let's execute both of those. Uh, just add a group by customer ID so the query is executed. Okay, so we'll we'll get exactly the same results from both queries. They're doing exactly the same operation. But it looks in the first one as if we're asking the database engine to perform more work. It looks that way. Let's have a look at the execution plans. And I'll just drag this window up. So if we have a look at the execution plans on first look, we can see the operators are exactly the same. Now the first query is a derived table. And what's interesting is to see the query cost so between the two it's exactly 50-50. So it's performing exactly the same amount of work for both queries. And this is how when working with drive tables, CTEs, views or inline table valued functions, <laughs> SQL Server becomes very clever. It expands the logic that you're trying to do into it as if it was a normal query. So what it's actually doing here is just performing the operation as if we wrote it as the second query. It knows it can ignore what we're actually telling it to do. It's trying to take a shortcut. And that's what we mean by inline execution. Really hope you have enjoyed that video. As mentioned, keep your eye out for other videos on derived tables coming to the channel shortly. Check out my other videos if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. 
Thanks a lot for watching.